there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. This is Abbey Door Court, where 12 months ago, Ruth Watson came to the aid of the derelict mansion. When I first came to Abbey Door Court, the house was in a really dire state. But the problem was that Caris owned the property, but Claire, granddaughter, wanted to sort it out and to make something of it. Do you think your grandmother's got confidence in you? Sometimes I question it. I do if you not do know. not know those figures, I am Jack Spratt. I'm back at Abbey Door Court to see whether anything did happen after the building work was finished. Is this house trading and who's running it? And do you have authority, your grandchildren, or do you still have to run things past your grandma? Harris Ward fell in love with Abbey Door Court over 40 years ago. She sold her small farm in Warwickshire and bought the estate for £12,000. It is a very special place. The whole atmosphere here is totally different to anywhere that I've ever been to before. And I think that's where its strength lies. A passionate horticulturalist, 81-year-old Caris has single-handedly cultivated a stunning garden out of the surrounding fields. Her creation attracts visitors from all over the country. Caris brought up her three children in the main house. But ten years ago, when the property became too much to manage, she moved out into a smaller cottage on the grounds. This is warm for a start. Having always lived in very cold houses, the feeling of being warm is quite surprising. Left empty and unloved, Abbey Door Court is falling into disrepair. Houses can withstand anything. Houses will rise from the ashes if they're going to. Caris's granddaughter, Claire Sage, is passionate about Abbey Door Court. She and siblings Hannah and Julian grew up with their parents in the old servants' quarters. Claire's parents now live away, but the siblings, all in their 20s, still live on the estate. But it's Claire who has a strong affinity with the house. I can't explain what it is about the house and living here that I just, I can't bear to see it, how it is and how it's falling apart. Claire still lives in the servants' quarters and works as a hospital administrator. But it's her dream to give up her job and devote herself to restoring the mansion to its former glory. My goal in life now is to make the house work and to make it a business and a home. Grandmother Caris insists she's happy to take a back seat. I don't really mind what happens to the house, as long as it doesn't intrude on the garden. I can't wait to back out, you know. <laughs> but as head of the family, Caris very much oversees proceedings. And if Claire's to get her wish, she'll have to convince her grandmother that she's up to the job. We do differ, but we have discussions, and well, some of the things she says I don't agree with, and some of the things I say she can't see that would work. In a bid to win her grandmother over, Claire's called in renowned hotelier and businesswoman Ruth Watson to help save the crumbling pile. Ruth's come to Herefordshire to meet Claire. She receives a warm welcome, albeit under a rather precarious porch. Hi there. <laughs> Hello. Are we safe? Just about, yes. <laughs> I'm Ruth. Claire, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, although I think we could find some better surroundings Definitely, than this. Yes. I think this kind of defines dilapidation, doesn't yes. it? Oh, Let's go in. Let's go in. <laughs> Ruth discovers that part of the house is already being redecorated and the ornate plaster mouldings restored. So, what's going on here, Claire? What are all these... We had um, a horrible water leak in the drawing room and the bedroom above, a mains pipe burst. So we had water just pouring through. So um, luckily we're all insured, so we'll have all the work redone at the moment. But the insurance money will only pay for the rooms affected by the leak. Financing the rest is up to the family. The house might be in a bad state of repair, but Claire is still lost in the romance of Abbey Door Court. This is the drawing room just in here. Oh! 
Now, this isn't a small room. <laughs> no, this is definitely the main feature. This is One lovely. Of the main what a beautiful room. This was just a lovely kind of family room, really. It had lots of kind of sofas and chairs. We had a rocking horse in the window. Normally one wouldn't think this, but the pipes bursting mean that you were able to make an insurance claim. It was a blessing in disguise, actually. It was yeah. horrendous when it happened, and to see the, the damage that it caused was just unbearable. But now it's just so exciting coming in here and just seeing it and imagining how it's going to look like when it's finished. Claire realises that this is a good opportunity to get the whole house up and running if she can persuade her grandmother to help. Just watch your step as yes. you come out here. It's very simple. Cool, this is slightly overgrown. Here's my grandmother, hard at work. <laughs> she certainly is. <laughs> Hello, Hello. how are you? Meet you. It's my grandmother. I'm, yes, and you're Ka Karis. Yes, I'm Karis. Karis, yes. very good to meet you. And what an enormous effort you must put into this garden. It's so labour-intensive. It is very labour-intensive, I suppose, but um, it's not too bad. The gardens are looking in very good array and the house looks in desperate straits. Did you feel that you deliberately abandoned it or that no. you just know? No, no, it's no. never been abandoned. It kind of, in a way, we just left it be. You know, cause but it wasn't be, abandoned. You know. No, no, I think it's been easy to kind of close doors and it's left for time. With Caris now in her 80s, the return of three grandchildren to Abbey Door Court is something of a blessing. Did you expect all the grandchildren to come back? No, never. So what would you have done? What I'm doing now. Which is? Living here and doing the garden. And then the rest of it would have just... Well, something would have turned up, I expect. Caris and Claire have conflicting priorities regarding the estate. Ruth's keen to find out what Claire's brother Julian makes of it all. So the neutrality, possibly, of your... Grandmother, lack of enthusiasm, if I'm, you know, taking it a step further, about the house is actually in direct contrast to how you feel about the house. I think that's how it works well, is that I'm so enthusiastic about it. My future is bringing the house back to how it was. And, Jules, you lean more towards your grandmother's love of the land. I would say so, yeah. 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 But if all could be kept together and all could be enjoyed together, yeah, that's in the hope, harmony. That we can all have our own roles and, and work together. That would be lovely. So we've each got our own Everyone projects, would be happy. Karis, even you? Uh, even me, but I shan't be here that much longer, shall I, hopefully. Oh, I wouldn't count yourself <laughs> out now. That's the thing about gardeners, you know, they tend to go on a long time. The problem is, who's going to take ultimate responsibility and put a stop to the rot at Abbey Door Court? The one thing I'm absolutely certain of is that Karis really loves the garden, loves the landscape, and the house doesn't mean too much to her, and that Claire really loves the house. And it's just as well that somebody does, because I think it is going to be down to the grandchildren to make this work. Rescuing Abbey Door Court from ruin is a massive undertaking. It would make a beautiful bedroom, but there has to be some investment here. And Ruth crosses swords with Karis. I don't believe you. Come on, come oh, on. Listen, I do know. The history of Abbey Door Court in Herefordshire stretches back to the 12th century, when it is said to have provided accommodation for the nearby Door Abbey. The stable yard was built in the 17th century, when the house became a coaching inn. Today, the estate has 140 acres of prime land and an exquisite garden on the banks of the River Dore. The centrepiece of the estate is this charming mansion. These grand rooms with their fine mouldings and handsome facade were added to the existing house in 1857. Claire Sage wants to see the deserted house restored dreams of giving up her job to run it commercially. But she needs to convince her grandmother, Caris Ward, that she can manage a viable business here. Currently, the annual income is just £2,000, generated from opening the gardens for five months of the year and from the tea room. But it's not nearly enough if the house is to survive. Claire still lives in the old servants' quarters where she was brought up as a child. 
she's called on businesswoman Ruth Watson to help secure the house's future. It's interesting because other people would be more selfish. They would want to be in this part of the house and, you know, hang that bit. I've always been in that half of the house. My mm. grandmother had this half mm. and we came in for kind of family occasions and things like that. So mm. it's always been very separate. It's sweet. <laughs> it's sweet. And the kitchens. Come on, <laughs> we're on our way here. to the kitchens, weren't we? The house hasn't been lived in for around ten years, but Claire has warm memories of her childhood here. This is one of the kitchens oh. here. Now, isn't that strange? One always <laughs> expects an aga to be piping hot, not frigid cold. Yeah, very much used to be. It was always kind of, this was the centre of the house when we were younger. We used to sit here as children, all leaning up against the aga, with my grandmother in the chair there, my mum there, and then kind of Sunday night TV on in the corner, and the dogs around us. It doesn't feel that way now, does it? No, it's not. It's a, I don't like being in this room so much now. It's nowhere near what it was like when we were small. No. It's not fair on the house that it's going to this state at the moment. I just think if we can bring it back and people can come and enjoy it. I think that's the main thing that I want for the house, definitely. Claire has already started making some income by opening a tea room in the old stables. It's a very popular feature with visitors to her grandmother's garden. But even with these two revenues combined, it's not nearly enough to pay for the upkeep of the house. Ruth sets off on her own to find out what potential the rest of the estate has to offer. She starts in the menage, once used for exercising horses. It's the most fantastic space, and if you got rid of the tractors and logs and put them into one of the other outbuildings, how about this for an indoor market or a permanent retail space? I mean, it's such a waste not to be used. Ruth is also convinced that the house itself has money-making potential. In such a picture-perfect location, the property could make an ideal guest house. But it will take upwards of £150,000 to restore the mansion. You know, one thing about this house is there isn't a rotten view out of any window. It is so beautifully situated. But this room is above the drawing room and it's where the damage occurred from, through the roof and it's lost all its cornicing. It would make a beautiful bedroom, but there has to be some investment here. And my view is that while the whole of the house needs redoing, and certainly the upstairs bedrooms, you might as well go the whole hog and actually make, if not all the bedrooms en suite, at least a number of them. Because if this is going to trade in any capacity, it's got to look rather better than it does now. <laughs> As a successful hotelier, Ruth knows that guests looking for a country house retreat demand a high standard of accommodation. I can actually see daylight through there. The county of Herefordshire is a popular tourist destination with a calendar full of annual festivals and events. It's home to the world famous Hay on Wye Book Festival which attracts 75,000 visitors every year. Accommodation during an event like this is in high demand. Ruth's on her way to the Old Vicarage, a local B&B &B that capitalises on such tourism. Like Abbey Door, it was once dilapidated, but has been lovingly restored and turned into a successful B&B &B by Paul Gerard and John McCall. Hello, Paul. Hi. And hello, I'm John. Nice John. To meet hello, you. and I'm Ruth. Thank you. And what a very handsome house you have. Yes. And staggering views. Staggering views and a staggering George yeah. Gilbert Vicarage. Paul and John bought the house in 1997 for 240,000 pounds, and spent a further 150,000 pounds lovingly restoring it. It's wonderful with the dual aspect. It's really beautiful room. Yes, it's lovely, isn't it? Was it in a really parlour state or? It was very much unloved. Yeah. This room took 16 weeks of work, for example. Really? Yes. Um, so a lot of investment in time. Uh, and, dare I ask, money? Yes, just a little bit. But we didn't keep too close a tab <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to remain sane. But was it tens of thousands to restore? Yes. Oh, it must have been, yes. Something you love doing? Yes. You have to um, enjoy meeting people. You have to enjoy being with people. It is very hard work, but the rewards, financial and otherwise, are, are enormous. The old vicarage has fewer bedrooms than Abbey Door Court. Rates are £100 per night, 
and with a high occupancy, it brings in enough money to support the business. Having done her research, Ruth's even more convinced that Abbey Door can operate as a successful business. She's back to share her findings with Caris and Claire. Hello, how are you? Thank you. Claire, full marks for asking for help, I have to say that, because I do think the house is in a pretty parlour state. You know, I know you've had the damp problems which have been caused by pipes, but I do think there is actually quite a lot of work that needs to be done here, because if this house is going to trade, I'm afraid the standards need to be raised. First, Ruth has a money-making idea for the menage. If you could actually have a monthly event that wasn't just about produce, but was about everything to do with crafts, local craftspeople coming here, food producers for sure, but everything that anyone wanted to sell, because you've got that amazing space, the menage. The benefit for you is that you charge rent for the, the stalls. You get an uptrade because you've got the tea room there and if you were to provide light lunches as well, so much the better. I think you should have a stall yourself selling cakes and all the wonderful things people like to buy and go away and scoff. We've got plant cells already, so you can add to your plant cells. And of course, people can go into the gardens as well. Next, Ruth turns her attention to accommodation. With several B&Bs in the village, she's worked out that Abbey Door Court could turn over around £60,000 a year, providing an income of at least 30000 What I think the house could be turned into is a five-bedroom, mostly ensuite guest house. With the place that I went to, they only have three bedrooms. They have fabulous views, but the house is no nicer than this, and the bedrooms are a lot smaller than these would be. They are charging £100 per night. They are about 85% occupancy full the year round. And they are making enough money for two people to live quite happily off the earnings and, and to keep investing back into the house. If you could see that your whole family, your grandchildren would be able to live here, enjoy this house, this estate, this garden, and all get a living from it, is that something that you think that you might be prepared to do, to help? Well, obviously, somehow or another, we've got to find money to mm. do it. There's no doubt about that. Mm. What I do know is that there is a shortage of accommodation in Herefordshire and that you do have the most extraordinary amount of happenings going on, from food and literary festivals to, you know, that the place is teeming with events. It's just wonderful. And I, I don't think you'll have any problem filling. I really don't. I quite like the idea. <laughs> do you? Yeah. It's going to be the, the hardest for you. But if the family is to make a success of a business, they'll have to decide how they manage the project. How do you feel about merging with the others and, you know, everybody benefiting? I think we need to talk about that, yes. definitely. Finally, Ruth leaves Claire with some homework. Now, before my next visit, I'd like to charge you with some activities. I think. Claire, you need to go and look at B&B &B to see how they do it. I think it would be very encouraging and inspirational. And I'd also like to see if we could do a trial of this internal farmer's market stroke trading area in the menage. It's a brilliant space. And I think if you could set that up with stallholders coming to sell their wares, let's see how it works. I think it could be a real success. I really think that if this family all pulls together in the way that it can do, because you're all strong, determined, hard-working people. I think this is really attainable, the idea that Abbey Door Court is sustainable, that the family can all live here together and the family can all prosper here. To make any change at Abbey Door, Claire realises that her grandmother needs to be on board. The b, &B idea is definitely something that's come up in the past, but... I don't know, never really got... I think because my grandmother said, um, not really. We all just can't all know that won't happen. Let's move on to the next thing. But Ruth knows that to make a success here, the next generation needs to be given the opportunity. Although her grandmother didn't think she would like the idea of running a B&B, &B, Claire actually said, yes, she would love doing it. But 
there's a long way to go because this family have now got to sit down and talk to each other about who does what. They've got to create some kind of proper strategy that will work long term. And above all, there's got to be some funding found from somewhere. Ruth thinks it's important for Claire to experience the B&B industry for herself, despite Caris's concerns over this as a future for Abbey Door. Saturday, 7 a.m., and Claire's at Hanover House in Cheltenham. It's a smaller property than Abbey Door Court, but requires just as much work. Claire's here to assist owners James and Veronica Ritchie. Got um, two cooked breakfasts, five scrambled eggs and smoked salmon and one poached egg. Have you ever cooked scrambled eggs? Um, more microwave from my university days. There's tomatoes and mushrooms to go on. Making breakfast for six guests might appear easy, but it requires a lot of planning and organisation. Was it one scrambled egg? The tea room seems very easy right now <laughs> compared to running this. Two more to come down, is that right? Okay, that's lovely. Here we go. Thank okay. you. Okay. It takes Veronica almost four hours to prepare, cook, serve and clear breakfast. And then it's time to move on to the bedrooms. Um, just check the teapot. All this has to be replenished, washed and brought back for the new guests. I'll do this, then you and Anna will strip the beds, remake them. How long does it take to do everything in the room? I would think you're looking at a good hour. Easy. On top of this, there's cleaning, oh, laundry nasty. and ironing. Even with help, this will be a full day's work for Claire at Abbey Door. Yeah, just right. Nice Keep in touch. Thank you. Yeah, bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. bye bye. Bye now. Sophie. Claire's arduous shift has made her realise that working in the hospitality business is tough. Incredible experience. Really enjoyed it. It was really good to come and done that and just to see how much work there really is, what their day is really, and then I'll take it back to the family and we'll go from there really. If Claire's to achieve her dream of running Abbey Door Court as a business. She must prove that she's got what it takes. Do you think your grandmother's got confidence in you? Sometimes I question it. But it's not going to be easy. She's the one that stirred it up and started it. Abbey Door Court in Herefordshire is in trouble. Claire Sage has drafted in Ruth Watson to save the family home from dereliction. I've lived here my whole life, 27 years. It's horrible to see something you love just deteriorate like that. But Ruth faces two obstacles. The house requires a massive cash injection and needs to earn its keep. It's Claire's ambition to run the house as a B&B, &B, and successful hotelier Ruth thinks it's a concept that could work. But Claire's grandmother, Caris Ward, is less convinced. Well, from my point of view, I could think of nothing more ghastly, but I'm a bit worried about what Claire might be landed with. <laughs> As well as opening as a B&B, &B, Ruth wants the family to consider alternative revenue streams. She suggested they utilise the outbuildings at Abbey Door and trial a farmer's market in the menage. But Grandmother Caris is sceptical. I think there are too many farmer's markets. There are so many. And yes, I think a farmer's market is not the thing to do here, really. Claire's pulled out all the stops to arrange today's market, but there's one thing that she hasn't been able to organise. In view of the weather, I don't think it's going to go very well, and I think people will be put off from leaving their homes. And Caris remains lukewarm about the event. I really have no feelings about it. I mean, it'll either work or it won't. And we'll need some cutlery, um, napkins and all that on the tables, and all the crisps can come out now as well. Despite Claire's optimism, the bad weather means a poor turnout. Don't know how I feel. I'm just uh, quite exhausted from it all. Yeah, learn things and learn for next time. After years of decay, it's finally dawned on the family that drastic action is required. Over the summer, they struggle to agree on a solution to Abbey Door's predicament. They finally agree to pool their savings to raise the £150,000 needed to finance restoration. But as they procrastinate, the house continues to languish.
It's four months since Ruth's last visit, and she's back to find out what progress has been made at Abidor Court. Well, nothing much has changed here. The ceiling's still falling down. It's still being propped up. Ruth discovers from Claire that it's not just a financial plan that the family have decided on. When I last met with you all and I was suggesting the house should be a and b is that happening or not happening? Yeah, we've, we've looked into it um, and we've just kind of got quite stuck on it. The, the money we need to raise to kind of set ourselves up as a b and um, we just can't meet that money at the moment. And also the work involved running a b and um, it's just, we just don't think that's the right thing for us at the moment. So where are you going? We're looking at weekly and weekend rental, self-catering, self to come and have the house for the, the time they want it. So I think there's a whole raft of things that are required for weekly rentals that would actually probably come in more expensive. The other consideration is that weekly rentals tend to only take place in school holiday times at Christmas, Easter, whereas B&B, I mean, it runs throughout the year, and this is such an ideal spot. Mm. So I'm quite surprised that, you know, the family seem to have made that decision. With the whole family now investing in the project, Claire's found her ambitions for the family home relegated to the back burner. At one point, this was your baby entirely, and then it started to be chipped away at by the members of the family. I mean, have you gone through a painful curve at all on this? Yeah, it's been, it's been hard, but that's life, and you've got to keep moving forward. It's been, it's been an emotional couple of months, definitely. Do you think your grandmother's got confidence in you? Sometimes I question it, but I did get carried away, I know I did, but then I think, yeah, it was my dream and it still is, but it's just on a different level now, I think, so... With a proposal to convert the house into a holiday let and Claire now out of the driving seat, Ruth wants to talk to Caris and get to the heart of the matter. Claire wanted things to happen, didn't she? I yes. mean, Claire was... she's the one that stirred it up and started it. So you Could... never had any intention of letting her just come and do her well, own thing clearly here. she couldn't have done it. No one person can do this mm. on their own. I think it would be an absolute nightmare for her mm. with the tea room in the garden mm. and a B&B. &B. Mm. And I think it is ideal as a country house, really. Mm. It, this just seemed to happen. So you, you think there's less work involved than in, in running it as a B&B? &B? Oh, I think so, yes. Yeah. My worry about it being um, used for uh, families is, is how many, much the facilities would still need to be done to the same standards as the B&B, &B, but the, the cash flow wouldn't be as great. We'd have to wait and see. Concerned about the direction the project is taking, Ruth calls Caris, Claire and siblings Julian and Hannah to a meeting as she's still convinced that running a B&B &B at Abbey Door Court is the way forward. At this present time in our lives, we don't have the time to run a B&B. &B. You don't, because you've got a full-time job, but Claire has got, originally also got a full-time job, and Hannah has And a if I job. can remind you, Claire said at the beginning she wanted to leave her full-time job in order to devote her attention and time here. Now, if the remit has completely changed, and I suspect it has completely changed, I am superfluous to any decision making here and nobody's going to listen to a word I say that is absolutely fine that is completely your prerogative to do so right but I have completely wasted my time because I actually do know what I'm talking about when it comes to B&B &B, weddings events what have you that is my business has been it for 25 years I actually do know what I'm talking about frustrated by the lack of progress Ruth is beginning to wonder if the family will ever make any headway at Abidor have you ever heard of a committee who actually come to a good decision? We haven't got a committee. We do it as a family and we all go along as a family and, and we just harmoniously jog along and I hope it'll work. If this has all been harmonious, every bit of the discussion, then I will lay all my worldly possessions that that is not the truth because nothing in a family is ever harmonious from top to bottom. I'm not trying to put dissension in the way of this. I'm trying to put practical aims and needs in the way of this. Ruth's stern words appear to have done some good. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Julian, Hannah and Claire make a start on clearing out 40 years of detritus. Nice. <laughs> And renovation begins on the house. 
Abbey Door Court is at last showing signs of life. Four weeks later and Ruth returns to Abbey Door and to visible signs of progress. The scaffolding is up and the renovation has begun, starting at the top. With such an ambitious project underway, Ruth is keen to check with Carius that every detail has been thought through. Do you know how much this roof is going to cost? I don't like to think about it. We will... 30,000? I don't know. I've no idea. Have they not quoted? Sort of. What do you mean, sort we're of, a bit Paris? You must we're know. a bit vague on anything, because <laughs> things are sort of in with things, you know. Who is running the project? Good question. <laughs> well, I don't know, really. We're, I think we all are at the moment, a bit. Yeah. Can we go and have a look round upstairs? Yes. Yeah? Yes, you can see the good, scaffolding good. from inside, then. <laughs> I'd like to see more than that. Once the roof is watertight, Plans are in hand to renovate the entire house. But with the family savings tied up in the scheme, Ruth's keen that they ensure a healthy return on their investment. Hundreds and hundreds of books. Good. So what are you planning on spending on restoring the house? As little as possible. And how little would that be, Caris? I just don't know. Caris, I do if you not do know. not know those figures, I am Jack Spratt. I... <laughs> Honestly, I will be perfectly serious to you. I do not know. So when the builders came and said they were going to do the roof and things, they didn't give you a price? No, I don't think so. We've... <laughs> All the... I don't believe you. Come on, come Honestly, on. Honestly, I don't go. know. I don't believe I a don't word know. I don't believe a word I'm it. not... I can't give <laughs> you Paris, figures. I don't believe a word of it. I cannot <laughs> give you figures because I am totally to not sure of them. Don't ask me to believe it. <laughs> I'm not sure of them. <laughs> An exasperated Ruth goes to find Claire. She's invited holiday letting agent Clive Sykes to view the house to get an idea of what it could earn if let. It's a marvellous room. Amazing. Looks a bit better now. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? Amazing. Oak floors. Um, from a holiday perspective, um, this room, the most important thing, there needs to be seating for everyone who is effectively sleeping in the property. Mm. So if the property is sleeping 16, then there needs to be 16 comfy seats. Um, just through there, we've got the dining room and the kitchen. If you want to go through, I'll show you the rest of it. Great. OK. There's still a lot of work to do, but Abbey Door Court's potential is clear. How many weeks of the year can they be assured of renting out the property? Um, I, I would be reasonably confident um, of, of, of doing, um, even in the first year, in excess of, of, of 30 weeks um, bookings. I mean, the season generally runs from Easter until the end of October. I, I would um, hang my head in shame if we didn't do gross rents of um, 30,000 in, in, in year one. If Abbey Door traded as a B&B, Ruth's worked out that even at 65% occupancy, profit would be around £30,000 a year, double that of the self-catering model. Resigned to the fact that she's fighting a losing battle, at least Ruth is safe in the knowledge that Abbey Door is being restored. I think congratulations are in order. Um, scaffolding, building work, progress being made on the house. Claire, how have you found the process? Because for me, the biggest change is, is what's happened with you, because you were the one who asked me to come. You were the one who were all excited about getting the house restored, maybe having a B&B &B here, and you've kind of rather gone backwards, as it were, in coming forwards. Um, it's been a roller coaster. We've kind of gone up and down, up and down. And so, yeah, we've got lots of ideas coming in, going, and now it's just it feels really exciting mm -hmm. because we've, we've got, we're going somewhere. All I'm saying to you is that Yes, you won't fail with doing holiday lets. I know you won't fail. There will be money coming in and it will be lettable. But I still would like you to not shut the door on the notion of B&B because I think you can make more money out of it. Would, would you consider keeping the door open on that? I definitely would, yeah. The major thing has been achieved, which is that this building is currently being restored. One year on, is Abbey Door Court trading as a business? 
and is Caris the forceful figure she always was? I expect Ruth is bound to say, um, how much does it all cost? And I still haven't got an answer for her. When Ruth Watson was last at Abbey Door Court in Herefordshire, the house was clad in scaffolding and undergoing extensive renovations. It's 12 months later, and the historic house is running as a successful self-catering holiday property. The family rejected Ruth's idea of turning the house into a B&B, &B and followed their desires to let it out to paying guests for short-term rentals. Since opening in May, they've had 22 bookings and made a profit of £5,000, which they've reinvested into the business. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. Grandchildren Claire, Julian and Hannah take care of the day-to-day -day aspects of the new business. Claire oversees the bookings and the administration, while Julian is in charge of maintenance and Hannah the housekeeping. The house is now up and running. It's the home we all knew, but kind of the new, improved version. The whole place feels alive from the outside to the inside. It just looks amazing. It's how it was as I grew up, and I love that. I really do. The building work took seven long months through the winter. The roof was taken off and replaced to ensure the building was watertight before each room was stripped back to its bones, replastered, and decorated. Though the whole family were involved in the project, there was one person who took charge over the vast transformation. The house I, I really did look on in the winter as a job. I, you know, it just had to be dealt with and finished, and the sooner we got to the end of it, the better. To finally have the house secure is a relief for everyone. No one more so, however, than 82-year-old Caris. As Ruth knows, I was quite happy to let it fall down. Well, as I say, I'm like the ancient mariner. The albatross has dropped on my neck. It's wonderful. Ruth is back at Abbey Door for the weekend. Tomorrow she'll be reunited with Caris, but today she's meeting Claire and having a look around before this weekend's house guests arrive. It's going to be lovely to see Ruth. It'll be lovely to show her everything we've done that I think at some stages she didn't, never thought we'd get to. The first thing Ruth notices is the new porch. Look, what can I see? The porch is standing up on its own legs. It's amazing, isn't it? It's very different. <laughs> and you've done a lot of work. New entrance. Yep. New entrance, so guests know where to come. So show me yep, everything. The old hall wasn't welcoming, but now it's warm and inviting. How's it going? in terms of the family. You have authority, your grandchildren. I mean, are you allowed to make all the decisions? We can do, but we like to run things by here. We like to kind of all communicate and keep each other informed of what's going on. And any big changes would definitely run by here. In my mind, it's always going to be her house. And it's always just one of those things. And we're all a team here and we need to communicate and we're all working together. What about your jobs? Because you're working full time still. Yeah, still working in Hereford so full time. So how does that fit in with running the house? Um, well, luckily, because it's kind of weekly rental or weekend rental, it's kind of one day a week that we need to be in here cleaning and changing. And then I do the booking, so I'm kind of evening work. You did have a desire at the outset to actually run this as a B&B &B and to give yeah. up your job. I mean, do you still see this as something that you could work full time in? Hopefully. Like, that's the aim, really, is to make something of here. Who knows what the future holds? I think just kind of get this business on its feet properly. So, um, can I start seeing things? Yeah, I mean, no, the, come the, on through. The big living room was, was obviously a real Yeah, key, that's our key room now, key room. so yeah, yes, yes. come on through and see yeah. it. Caris was project manager over the building works and Claire was in charge of the interior design. Gosh. Yeah. Tell me about the sofas. <laughs> <laughs> they took a long time to come, but I'm quite pleased with them. All right. Finish the room. You sound okay. like my grandmother. <laughs> she doesn't like them very much. I think they're just totally inappropriate, Claire. I'm sorry. They might work OK in a loft, but I think it would have been much nicer to have had much more classical furniture. Because you've got, you know, very fine pieces with the, the bookcase here and the grandfather clock, and you've got the grand piano over here. And personally, not my taste. Ruth advised Claire from the outset that holiday let properties experience periods of low occupancy, whereas a B&B &B would provide more consistent business throughout the year. If, in time to come, and I'm not just flogging my dead horse no, for the sake no. of it, if you did do B&B &B and, you know, you gave up your job to do it, I yeah. think you could get 
it's the all year round trade yeah. I think you could get. But you're enjoying yeah. this. I am, yeah, really enjoying it. I love coming in here, I love seeing it, especially when it's just ready for guests to come in and it's just perfect. And I'm very conscious you've got guests staying this weekend. Yes, and we are shortly. running out of time. I'm going to love and leave you. Um, oh, and can yeah. I have a little wander? Yeah, no, do, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ruth takes herself off to look upstairs. It costs £2,500 to hire Abidore Court for a week in peak season. There are six big bedrooms which can accommodate up to 16 people. Ooh. Well, this is a big improvement because I seem to remember there was pane of glass missing over there, I'm not sure, but it does look hugely better and what a fabulous room. I mean, uh, you know, I'm nitpicking, I don't know why the carpet's on a diagonal and I think they could have done better than going to an out-of-town warehouse to buy the bed, but it generally looks hugely improved. I mean, it looks like a house that is habitable. That's what we wanted. Ruth slips away before the guests arrive. Tomorrow she'll be back to see what they think of the house and to go head to head with Caris. I expect Ruth is bound to say, um, how much does it all cost? And I still haven't got an answer for her. I've got a bit of an answer. It's the next morning and Abidor is full of life with 16 guests who are making the most of every room. Ruth knows that positive guest feedback is critical for the success of an emerging accommodation business. So she's keen to know how this group have got on. Hi, guys. Hello. Actually, all girls. Hello. All girls in the kitchen. <laughs> I can't believe I've just walked through the house. And the corridors and the hallways and up and down the stairs, it's great. It's lovely hearing the sound of people enjoying themselves. It's very good. Have you done a house let before, the, the families? Not all no. together. No, we've no. spoken about it, but this is the first time. But, yeah. Yeah. And what about the price? Do you think it's fair or too cheap or too expensive? I think it's perfect. When it's there's okay, four families well. here... Um, then How much know, is it costing per family? I think we worked out to about £400 a family. For the weekend? Um, yes. Yeah. So everything's going well? Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. It's yeah. a great place for you know, groups of friends or groups of families like as we are. Clearly the house is a success. So Ruth is off to find Caris. The beautiful gardens at Abbey Door are still open to the public and have been very popular over the summer season. Ruth finds Caris in her new headquarters, an old barn she had renovated at the same time as the main house, which has become the new entrance to the gardens. Look, this fantastic. Oh, well, my shed. It's your shed. My shed. It's your office, your sitting room, your planting room, your greenhouse. It's everything. It's yeah. brilliant. I it's love it. Shed. I love it. I have to say that I wish the interior design here had been translated into the house because I don't like the sofas <laughs> in the living room. Well, I was quite tactful about the sofas, but... What you? Really? Yeah, uh, Promise yes, me? yes, yes, I was, for me, quite tactful. I didn't say what I thought. So do you feel now the house is off your shoulders, it's not your responsibility anymore, that you can enjoy the garden more? I think I can enjoy the garden with a clear conscience, put it that way. I look at it out of the kitchen window and think you're nothing to do with me. Come and show me. The cost of renovating Abbey Door was split between the grandchildren and Carries. Claire and her siblings took out a business loan of £35,000 to finance the interiors, whilst Caris paid for the external building work. Previously, Ruth and Caris almost came to blows over finances, and with all the demonstrable changes at the house, Ruth wonders if there's been a change in Caris. Now, Caris, I think I can say with affection that you were implacable in your obduracy about telling me what this was going to cost and how much you were going to spend. Are you going to tell me how much? I will tell you a, a bit how much. Yes, you okay. Yes. Tell me a bit how much. Do you much? want to know? Yes, I do. Well, the exterior, it cost us 57000 Right. Which I don't think was too bad. No, very good. What's interesting for me is that the grandchildren still seem to feel that it's your house. Are they wrong to feel that way? Oh, totally. It's certainly not my house. I've barely been in it since it's been finished. No, I, I have no affinity with the house at all. I would like them to stand up to you more, not in an aggressive, confrontational mm. way, but I kind of want to shake them and say, look, you know, your grandmother will probably respect you more if you just get on and do this. Maybe they're so used to me saying what's happening, everybody goes along with that. Yeah. I don't mind if anybody disagrees with me. It doesn't matter a bit. 
All that's left is for Ruth to bring the family together for one last time. So, it's over a year ago when I first met you. And Claire, how do you feel about all this? Because you were the instigator. I think I got very carried away with the kind of the romance of it all and that I can make it all work. But I have got a brother and sister. I've got my grandmother and my mum. I'm very lucky to be in the position I am. And it's just, it's perfect now that we can all do it together as a family. When we first met, um, my opinion was that you were certainly indomitable, but um, quite difficult, quite contradictory. I could be talking about myself, I know. Um, but I think we've become quite good chums over this and I certainly have developed a lot of respect for you. We were very grateful to you because I mean if you hadn't sort of goaded us on to it we probably well I might never have done it. I really have to say you know congratulations to everyone involved because you have restored Abbey Door House. It's there, it's laughing again. I have to give Karis and her family full credit for restoring Abbey Door, but for all the changes that have been made to it, one thing hasn't, and that's that Karis is still the doyenne of this estate. And it's her, really, that has made this happen.